Good morning from Berlin. Um, it's Alexander speaking, your host, and with me is Wilhelm Schmidt, the CEO of A Lange und Söhne. Wilhelm, very warm welcome. Good, good morning, and thank you for being with us today. I'm happy to be in Berlin. And uh, why are we in Berlin? Because we are going to present you a world premiere. It is about a very particular watch. Lange and Söhne is presenting, actually. It is the Zeitwerk Lumen. That's, I think, exciting. Uh, I, in the sense, when you're going to see the watch, it is exciting because it's really a particular watch you have been doing here. Uh, absolutely. And um, I can just recommend, uh, uh, stay tuned because um, you know us by now, if we launch a new watch, it will not just be a watch in a different case uh, or a different dial. It is really something quite special. So it's worth waiting for a bit and it's a little bit of a teasing I know but um, we will bridge the time until you see the watch with hopefully some exciting uh, insights. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Before we're going to show you the watch and um, present you the pictures, uh, William, we just passed uh, through a very uh, particular time. Um, COVID, etc. Uh, almost everything stood still. How was it in Glashütte and how was the situation in, in, at the manufacturing yeah. at Lange & Söhne? Yeah. How did you go through that uh, very unique uh, situation? Look, look I, I think, um, and, and I'm quite open on this, it, um, it hit us unprepared. Um, if somebody tells me he or she was prepared, I would anyhow doubt it because nobody um, saw it coming in, you know, in, in the total size that then arrived. Um, and it took us April, May and June last year to, to prepare ourselves for the situation, to also digest that this is something which very likely is there to stay for a while. Um, and as you know us, you know, the way we, we, we produce our watches, we cannot just shut down the factory and then come back a few months later. So we had to emphasize on a controlled slowdown. We never shut down the manufacturing at all. So it was always car, people call it uh, ticking over. Um, and the funny thing is, as we had it under control, which I think was probably July, August, we already saw first signs of recovery. And unfortunately, it takes us as long to, to ramp up as it takes us to slow down. So the moment we reached what we thought is the level, we had to ramp it up again. So the, three, the first three months, preparational work, the next three months, working with all the changes, and then, to be honest, the, 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 crow, the corona crisis was there, but we did not see it in our business. Um, we had to deal with protecting our people, specifically in, in the manufacturing environment, because, you know, many people in one room. So we emphasized on their protection, which worked out quite well so far, because it's not over yet. We mustn't forget that. Um, but I think overall, I would not be shy to say that we come out of it stronger than we got into it. That sounds great. One of the results of, of this uh, um, last period is the watch we are going to talk about. Yes. Um, it's a bit of a history behind that watch because yeah. the, the theme the theme started earlier. The watch, the first watch you presented with a digital display started earlier. So. Uh, Look, we launched the Zeitwerk 2009, um, and, and you know it because you know us for a long time. At the time, I'm pretty sure it was quite a controversial launch. It, it shocked some. some uh, a lot of people, yeah. too. You know, it was not something which you would have expected from us. No. Um, in those days, because social media didn't exist. And, and it, it existed, but it was... Uh, it, it, it's uh, yeah, but, it, you know, yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. Um, so obviously the noise was a lot less than let's take the Odysseus, which was you know in, at the peak time of social media. So everybody had an immediate opinion, 
and so on and so forth. But I'm pretty I, sure I, uh, had I was suffering a lot about uh, your comments or answering your comments <laughs> when I presented <laughs> all this. I was really on it, and uh, some some of them were pretty tough. I remember. Yeah, it's it's you know if you if you change things if you want to extend the scope of of of, of your your maison um, and of your product offering then of course some people will not like it others will like it um, and and as long as it is still within what you stand for I think you have to accept that somebody loves it and somebody doesn't. Today, this sidewalk got iconic. It's I'm not saying, you know, we never say iconic to I, ourselves. I, you can say it, I, I cannot. And, and, and I also think 12 years in the market is still too early to... But let's be clear, nobody is copying it because it is a pretty difficult thing to manage, all the weight... Uh, the power, uh, the instantaneously jumping without destroying, and so on and so forth. So it's a it's a phase today, and if you look at it, everybody will know that's an Alange und Söhne, which is the target that we wanted to achieve at the But time. But this is, uh, to make it clear, as you said in the very beginning, it's not just another phase, not a dial, no. it's a complete new movement. Yes. And we, would, we would never repeat ourselves, because one of... Probably Grail watches again. That's not. That's a quote from collectors. For sure, is the original sidewalk luminous? At the time, we were still allowed to use the word luminous, but I believe amongst collectors, it's more known as a phantom. Um, and that was 2010. Just to put a different case, would upset uh, the fans of our of, of Alange and Söhne. Therefore, we wouldn't do that. So this watch, which is here in front of me, uh, the, the new Zeitwerk Lumen, um, is a complete different movement. Um, why is it different? The jumping mechanisms um, of digital displays, discs, they are extremely demanding uh, in many regards. And of course, we learned a lot in the last 15, 16 years, because that's when we started uh, working on the original uh, movement with the striking time, with the minute repeater, with the date. And then we took all that to come up with that watch. So you will see the push button uh, that can change the hours quickly. So you only have to adjust the minutes with the crown. Um, you will see that the old topic, I can't, I can't, you know, put the watch aside for the weekend because it will then stand still on Monday. This now will come with 72, 72 hours, hours of power reserve, hours of power reserve which yeah. is twice as much as the original one. And of course, all the things we learned, um, all the construction topics that we may have not addressed, 100% perfect, how can you, if you start something new, all these knowledge and competence that went into that watch. Wilhelm, let me interrupt you for just a few moments and add some technical details about that amazing movement, the Caliber L043.9. You heard it already in the video. It is a new development and it consists of 462 parts. You have 61 jewels. It is a classical lever escapement and the escapement is fitted with an in-house manufactured um, balance spring. So it is a Langeonsöhne balance spring that is fitted to the escapement. And of course, and this is very important to mention, also in the second generation of the Zeitwerk, um, the second generation also featured that patented constant force escapement and the constant force escapement controls the complex switching process at the same time handles two important functions. On the one hand, it generates the impulse for the jumping advance of the time display. And this is also quite important. On the other hand, it drives the balance with nearly uniform power across the entire runtime. This keeps the amplitude constant, which has a very positive effect, effect on the rate stability of the new Zeitwerk. So 
And there are tiny little things that I think are great. The push button um, to change the hours. You push it, nothing happens. You release it, it'll jump. Why? Because we all will put different pressure onto the button. The one thing we do not want is different torque, momentum into that watch. Would never be able and to. And I cannot determine how, no. how, 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 how fast, how quick you press or I press, but what I can determine and define is you the release it the other way. So that's why it will only jump once you release the button. That's and smart. it will be absolutely defined, the torque of that, the momentum is absolutely defined. Yeah. So these are the tiny little things that we learned over time from also other watches. And, and, and it's all now in that one watch. And on top, and this is the really spectacular thing is that uh, so far uh, you only saw the hours and the minutes. And yes. now they, first of all, they are uh, luminous. Yes. Or we can't say the word that we use. We them. can, luminous, you, yes. You, you, just the watch is called lumen. You, yeah. because we But all, they are luminous, but yeah. you have a see-through uh, dial. Yes. Uh, that is not absorbing the light that is charging the superluminova underneath. Absolutely. And so uh, in darkness, you will see those digital uh, yeah. indications. Yeah. And this is really spectacular. It's just, it's just you know, it, it's, it's, the two, it's almost like a day and a night phase, uh, which, which is something people uh, and collectors do appreciate. Um, on top of that, it's in honey gold. It's the first yeah, that's, that's lumen in honey gold. Uh, for those that are not familiar with the honey gold, first of all, it's a lot tougher and stronger than normal gold. But I believe the real beauty of it is the capability to change the color a little bit. If you expose it to natural light, it will appear as a very soft pink gold. And if you put it into artificial light, it will look like a very soft white gold. Um, and I think that's almost the best out of two worlds. And I think that's why a lot of... Uh, Die-hard fans love the honey gold. So we have three things that are new. It's the honey gold case. It is a new, completely new uh, conceived movement yes. based on all the experiences you Absolutely. had the last years. Um, it is a lumen, meaning you have that uh, con uh, conceived see-through yes. style. And it is a limited edition. They're always limited, you know, whenever we use honey gold, by nature is limited because um, th the material is very nice. It just gives you an idea what makes it so complex to work with it. Um, all our watches are designed and, and produced in a way that you should wear it. If you wear it, you will collect scratches and dents and God knows what. And some people say that's how it is and I want to maintain it. Others say I want after seven, eight, nine, ten years, I want the watch to look like new. So they send it back to us and the refurbishment of a case is not that we polish. We first would laser with the same material all the dents and scratches. And then we basically polish what we put on too much. By that we we maintain the integrity of the case and the design. Uh, in normal, with normal material, no problem. Honey gold, you have to do that under argon, you know, oxygen-free environment, which is adding to the complexity of the maintenance of that watch. And because of that, we will only be able to use that for limited editions because otherwise you get the crazy. capacity would be, no, it's no, not you, there. You know, we have yeah, to provide you're blocked, capacity. You're blocked, you're blocked, all your exactly. service uh, centers blocked with uh, those. Exactly. Okay. exactly. So it's 200 pieces? Yes. Starting today, the 24th of uh, October. October. October, the watches are available only in boutiques. Yes. It's a yes. boutique only edition. It will be, because 200 will be by far not uh, enough. Too little, yeah. as we all know, yeah. and and again, it'll take us a while to produce it. So yeah. I already address an apology for all those that want to watch and we cannot supply, but it is what it is. You know, it's it's a it's a difficult to produce watch. Um, 200 is the number that we have capacity for. More we want to. And just in case you want, uh, upon those who are lucky to get one, the price is 114,000. 114,000 euro, including uh, 19. That's the German, the German retail including price, including 19 of VAT. So yeah. if you want a net price deduct, it's yeah. 19 percent. But then, yeah, crazy watch uh, in terms of, yeah, it's 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 like a, 
I, I've seen it the first time this morning, and you you get an, uh, you are so much attracted to the watch, to what you see. This anachronism of of playing with mechanics, but having a digital display, yes, uh, showing all the beauty by opening the dial, knowing the fact that this is really the 2.0 version, yeah, with so many little details. Anthony was really Anthony de Haas, the technical director. You probably all know was probably into the watch for. Oh, it's not a baby of uh, the last year. It's quite a bit of work that went into it. Um, but again, you know, that's that's what I always like. If I work with Tony and the team, um, they don't just change a thing. Yeah, yeah, that's they, they, right. they, 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 they think it through to the end. Sometimes it's a bit nerve wracking because, you know, you're adding uh, complexity on top of complexity on top of complexity. And time and time and time. But, and but you know, as Walter Lange said, never stand still. And yeah. probably that's what these guys uh, really live, uh, <laughs> live up to. And, and that's why it takes some time before we come up with new watches. You, you just said never stand still. That would have been the last thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Like, Alang and Söhne is the, that, what, what's the, the, the phrase that really, uh, uh, says what it is, it's never stand still, and um, yeah, really I'm nice. Thanks, Alexander. And um, um, before finishing, I just quickly want to uh, say a few words. Uh, we are in a pretty particular location yes. here. Yes. I learned this this morning from Arndt Einhorn, the, yeah. um, who is uh, the, the press director of, of Alang and Söhne. That's, that's a cinema. Or it's it a pop-up story. Actually. It was a cinema. Yeah. That's a story in a cinema. Pressed and happy, Alexander. I'm sure I am. And we will meet in Geneva. Exactly. Uh, next watches and wonders are going to be analog. That's what is foreseen for now. Yes. In end of March. End of March, beginning of April. Yes. So you can already get ready uh, for many good videos coming from Watch Advisor, and I'm very looking forward meeting you guys again. Wonderful, Alexander. Thank you. From Berlin, Wilhelm Schmidt, the CEO of Alang and Söhne. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you are as much impressed about the watches, I am. Wilhelm is. Uh, use the comment section as always um, and let's share some thoughts. Uh, 200 pieces, I know probably not all of those who want one will get one, but at least we have seen the watch as close as we could. And yeah, thanks for watching and yeah, stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube. Bye. Bye bye.